And we're heading from Nose's Point. That's where we've been staying, Nose's Point, not Norse Point, as I think we said. But I think Norse Point actually would be really cool. So yeah. I don't know why it's called Nose's Point. Know. Maybe that looks like a nose. Maybe. Maybe if you know, then let us know. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're heading down now onto the beach. It's high tide about now, and we want to walk around um, right through Blast Beach and around in low tide to the beaches beyond because we're told that there's some interesting sea glass there. Who told us? Uh, this is Andy or the Happy Picker. Yeah, Happy Picker. So Thanks for the info. Andy, don't. Uh, I hope you don't mind us sharing your tip. Looking very rough today and I've forgotten the way to get down. So I've kind of walked the wrong way. But uh, I wonder how much it's changed since last year. So we've now found the way down. It did look, it's slippery. Yeah. It's not something we want to slip up, is it? No, not when I'm already damaged. Which way, left or right? Whichever you want to go. Which one looks less slippy? The right. This looks steeper. Oh, don't don't take any notice of that. Go that side. That was actually quite slippy. See, it's rough today. Yeah. But I wonder what it's turned up though. Yeah. I wonder if there's any dragon eggs down there. That'll be nice. Yeah. I didn't realise there's massive pools of water. If you look over to the far side. Yeah. There's a massive like lake over there, a massive lake, kind of a big area, big pond. Oh yeah, I see it now. Um, with like this yellow water in it. Yeah, chemical, don't want to be touching that. No. The only trouble I'm thought of is if we're going to eat food with our fingers, we've not got nothing to clean off from. Well, we'll have to eat it from the bag, maybe. Yeah. So I don't know if this comes out on the film or not, but it's actually quite steep. And this is a big heap, I think, of um, spoil, really, from the... Coal? From the coal and the works. A little bit climbing down, because if you look over this edge here, it just looks black, looks like coal waste. But we were chatting to some locals, and they were saying a lot of the coal here, the mines, are actually under the sea. So they mined out under the sea, and then all the spoil was just sort of dumped here. So we've got another big seat bit. I can't really see, because and I can't hear either. What? Yeah. <laughs> This place has just got so much character to it. I can just imagine them mining out the coal here, all the men and don't know if women used to do it. I think it's mostly men. Yeah. And kids. Yeah, and young boys probably. Mining out the coal here all them years ago. Like. But how would you fancy that going out under the sea in a mine? No, I would not. It would have been awful. Yeah. But all the piles, I think that must just be, is that piles of it or are the cliffs broken down? It might be. It looks like coal, it's dark to the edges of this anyway. Yeah, and I mean, you look at down here at the edge of the, the ground, how black it is. Yeah. Is that all coal in there? I'd imagine so. Well, so. You can see the coal and bits of it down there, can't you? Yeah. I think coal floats, so it's going to get washed away first. Yeah. We're just looking over there. Yeah. And how kind of rugged this landscape is. I mean, trying to work in these conditions as well. You know, when there's storms and stuff. And the tides and... Not something I would fancy doing. No. But I don't know, I just have, like, I can just feel the, all them people here. I know it sounds crazy, it might sound crazy, but I can just feel the, the atmosphere of what it would have been like. 
is kind of like really mesmerizing. I think this is actually my favorite beach here because of that, because of that history here. Yeah. It's certainly the most interesting landscape, isn't it? Yeah. So actually later, hopefully we're going to Bowles and actually in uh, Bowles Fish and Chips there in Seam, they've actually got photos all the way up the stairs to the toilet, all photos round of actually some of the coal miners. I don't know if they're specifically just from the last beach or all the other collieries around Durham. I don't yeah. know. Blast Beach has three pretty much unique types of glass on it that I've not seen anywhere else. Not in quantity anyway, and here it's in masses. So if you want to know that, what that is, uh, watch along and I'll explain a bit later. So you can actually see here, look, the cold. This black line is all cold. And that sea oh, cold that's been, you will probably take that, dry it and burn it, I reckon. And here's another piece, look, wow. So this is just an example of the glass you get in Blast Beach. It's really chunky sometimes. And that is a great example of it. Look how thick that is. So that's my first piece I've actually picked up. And let's just do a time check. So it's 8.54. Oh, nice. First piece. But you see nice. all this coal? Yes, there's lots of coal. Like round black dog poos. Now, all these types of glass are quite difficult to see, but let's just look at the first one for a minute. So this, you might think is a stone, but actually no. He says no. Can you see through that? So this is what they call pirate glass, which is basically glass from bottles that was used for things maybe like olive oil, that they didn't want it to go off. They didn't want it to be oxidized within the bottle so it block out virtually all the light. So the story goes that the ship sank, which had, which was full of these bottles, hence it came from a ship, hence it's pirate glass. So that's the first type of glass and we'll come back to the other two shortly. So I've got to say pirate glass actually is plentiful on this beach. You have to really look for it or it's, it's lots. You have to look with a torch to see that you've not picked up a stone, but there's loads of it here. You pick up really a black stone, they're very smooth often and shiny. Then you know you've got, put a light on it and then you'll know that it's pirate glass. There's plenty of it here though. It turns out Blast Beach was used as an alien planet in Alien 3. So I thought I'd have a close look at these yellow pools. I think it looks really alien. What do you think? got to try and get around there. Now apparently the high tide is four meters and low tide I think is 1.2 or 1.8 meters so that's a two meter drop between the high and low. I reckon we're half a meter below high at the moment so we've got about another meter and a half for it to drop there. I wonder if we'll actually get around there today. I'm not entirely sure. Low tide is at, I think, about 12, maybe one. It's currently 10, so we've got three hours worth of 
tide to go out if we get around there. I'm not sure it'll happen. Anyway, have a little look here. So I'm right at the end of the beach now. But as you can see, the stack, there's a massive stack behind me that I didn't actually get to last time. But I've come past, there's a kind of pillbox type. See the fence. And there's also another stack back there. I'm down a little bit on my own. I might fly the drone around the corner, see what I can see. There is this layer of yellowish clay here. Now I wonder if this is the origin of the yellow pool, as in the sand around the yellow pool, further down the beach. I'm not sure it's original, as I'm not sure if it's actually was original here. I mean, I wouldn't. I would say no. That looks like it's. I mean, it looks like it has layers, but it's big boulders in it, so it looks like it's been chucked in. So I'm guessing this is to do with the mine or the mining process that's been left here and slowly eroding. Because if you look at the cliffs like over there, for instance, the, where the clay joins the cliff, the, the clay doesn't extend into the cliff; it just stops at the cliff. So I'm guessing that this is part of the mining. I've come all the way out the beach and I will now have a little wander down the beach again because this it's not especially, I haven't found less, that much. I found some different bits and pieces, but not that much. I'm not sure we're gonna be around the corner. It just looks too dicey to be honest, but we'll have to give it an hour and see. I'm gonna go and find Jane. I'm gonna get washed away. Oh, and this bit yellow. And that's proper yellow. I don't know if that is just a yellow covering to it or if that is... It almost looks like it's been sat in something yellow. But that's pretty. And now I see a bit of green. Oh, actually, it's very similar to sort of yellow. There might be kind of rust on that, I don't know. I want another bit. This has got kind of bubbles in it, I think. And I think there's another bit. There we go. Whey. Right, let's wander back. of the shingle and the pebbles as the waves come in and out. That's the action that is rounding this glass off. It's happening right now. There's bits of glass out there. There's bits of glass out there that you're going to find in the next 50 years. The sea's just amazing to watch, isn't it? So what I didn't know until I watched this footage is actually there's a path that runs all the way along the hilltop and it then gets onto the beach about here. You can see it now. So if you struggle with steep hills like we do, then maybe walk along and wander down that path. Let's catch up with Jane. second type of glass we're going to talk about, which I think Jane might have just found, is what they call Boaty Blues stroke slag glass. I'm not sure if this is one or not, but the smaller pieces you can see through. Look. So this is a Boaty Blue or slag glass. Again, this is plentiful on this beach. There's tons of it, there's tons of bigger stones in this as well actually that I believe are slag glass, but you can't shine a light through because they are 
They're too thick. Slag glass comes from, I believe slag glass comes from the manufacture of iron and steel. It's kind of a byproduct of it. So it was never intended to be glass, so it was just dumped. And because this is glass beach, where there's lots of industrial stuff going on, it's just been dumped here. Yeah, that's slag glass, tons and tons of it on glass beach. And I've never seen that much of it really anywhere else. So slag glass, slag glass stroke Foti Blues. I don't think when we get down there, low tide is at in two hours. I, I can't see that moving in two hours for us to be able to get down there. And there's Jane, I wonder where she went. She's over there. Even though she's got all the way down here, you can see she's not bending to pick up the glass now. Right, I think we're going to head back towards the car. Uh, I've got wet feet again, still the wet boots from yesterday, but I've only got wet once so far with the sea, so that's an improvement. <laughs> but I'm going to head back now. And I forgot to show you actually after an hour what we had, sorry. Um, this is me. We must have been here three or four hours. So, um, you know, interesting greens, yellows, slag glass, boaty blues, all interesting. But we'll actually do a wash, probably actually when we get home, because we haven't actually got a sink at the moment. So when we get home, we'll wash it up, which for you, will be probably next. For me, it'll be a couple of days. third type of glass really is it's industrial I think industrial in origin and it is got a unique there are unique sort of greens and yellows really on this beach now I don't know if they've been stained green or yellow or if actually that's the intended color but that's a, a green that's quite unusual and I've not really seen greens like that anywhere else I'll just find you a yellow so here we go, look, this is one of the yellows. Now I don't know if it is, like I said a minute ago, I don't know if it's a stain on the glass or whether it is in the original makeup of it. But it's certainly plentiful here. So most of the glass here is chunky and a lot of it is unusual in color, as in it's these unusual yellows, unusual greens. There are clears as well. But that's the third type of glass that you get here on Glass Beach that I've not seen anywhere else. trying to walk back along the beach with your support. Now it's raining too. We've still got to get up the um, massive, great big, steep, steep hill that we came down. So, yeah, it's not fun. Uh -huh. We've got all that way to go up there, which is not going to be easy. So we've got to head up there with Jane that's got a really bad back she can barely move. Um, she stopped at a little bait, hopefully we get up there. Uh, just quickly before um, this video is probably about done I expect, but we, we saw um, I think five different people yesterday who watch our videos now. I'd like to say thank you to all those people. 
Um, and if you wouldn't mind doing us a favor, if you already subscribe, then thank you very much. But YouTube loves you to interact with our videos or any video on YouTube. And if you interact with it, if you, for instance, watch it more than 30 seconds, if you watch it to the end, if you give us a thumbs up, if you leave a comment, YouTube looks at these things and it sees the people that interact uh, with videos and it promotes them. So even if you're not a subscriber, can you give us a thumbs up? Uh, leave us a comment. I mean, if you've been to Blast Beach, if you've been to see him, are you wanting to come to see him? All these questions, or even reply to somebody that's already made a comment in the video. It's brilliant, but uh, thanks to all those that have watched. And we will give you an update at some point. Hopefully Jane is okay. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get out of here. Made it to the top. Well done. So we just got out of the hospital. We've been there nearly nine hours. Uh, turns out Jane has broken one of the screws in the steel rods that are in her back. So it's lucky we came back early. But uh, she's prescribed rest and painkillers. Watch this face. Stuff from blast. Blast beach. All of the blast beach. Oh, in a bit too quick. So I'm gonna. This needs a really good wash because blast beach has got this. There's a pump line. It's got the um, you know, the coal and the. Industrial, industrial waste stuff in it, so this water this water been a bit hotter actually. Now I need to tip some out. Where is my bright pink piece? That is a multi, milk glass multi look. Oh, you see? wow, yeah. Where's your pink piece in? I don't know. Tell on the side for special pieces. What well, is blue? Yeah. There's a. Um, Another blue. There's a pink <laughs> There's a shell. Right, side glass. Side glass. Uh, pirate glass. So. Arr. Right, so as you can see, the stuff from Blast Beach comes very pitted because it's quite it's quite rough stones there, really, I guess. Which gives it knocks all the edges off, but it also leaves it looking sort of dry. So Jane likes to put mineral oil on it. 
and what mineral oil will do is it basically fills in these little pits and it gives it more of a translucent look rather than this sort of dry look. So we'll put a link to the mineral oil we used on the on Amazon. Come on, focus. And if you want to buy some mineral oil, it'd be great if you used our link because we get a few pence from that from a from an Amazon affiliate, and that kind of helps us keep making the videos. And you know, we'd appreciate the couple of pence if 50 people buy it. That's you know, 50 times a couple of pence. So much appreciated. First, you can tell us about the brick. Okay, it's not up the right way. Yes, it is. Okay, so this brick Colin found on Blast Beach. Um, it was if you get onto Blast Beach and walk right to the end on the you walk right, right to the end, he found this brick. Now it's not a full brick, but clearly it says London. And then the last letter is the D. So this brick was one of the bricks from London Dairy Bottle Factory in Seam. Is it your favorite thing? And it is my favorite thing because this is a piece of history. And I don't know if you know, um, I do like history and I absolutely love the history of Seam um, from the bottle works to all the collieries up there. And I think we've not yet to find that they have an actual museum up there, which I think is a shame because they should have. If you've been to the museum at Seam, um, please let us know where it is. I mean, obviously Google would find it for us, but uh, if, if you've been in there, if there is one, please let us know what it's what it's like, because I'd love to go on the next, next visit. Yes. Uh, there is, however, which we haven't been to, just up a little bit in Sunderland, there is a National Glass Museum. But I'm not sure if that is has... Is it a National Glass Museum or National Glass Centre? National Glass Centre. So I don't know if that is a museum. So I don't know if that will have all the stuff that I'm interested in and probably many others that love the history of Seam. Um, but if anyone local up there or not local knows if there is a um, museum um, of Siam, the industry, the industry, industrial kind of museum, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the industry of the collieries and the bottle works. I mean, I also love seeing old pictures as well. Seeing old pictures, and actually, uh, when we was at Bells, yeah. Bells have quite a lot of. Um, pictures of the miners all up the walls, uh, which is really lovely to see. But yeah, I think CM for me is the history of the place as much as it is the glass. My brick is going to take pride of place on my workbench. So every day that I'm out here making some lovely jewellery with the beautiful treasures of um, CM and surrounding areas, East Coast, should I say? To the east coast, northeast, the northeast coast of England. I will be looking at this brick and thinking of all the people that worked there all that many years ago and how their lives may have been. Friday morning at work, I I had a fall, ended up on my back hitting my head. Now about ten years ago, I had already had uh, spinal surgery. Um, my L4, L5 and obviously falling on my back like that I was uh, in quite a bit of pain but me being me, hardcore as I am, I was like nope I'm fine I'm not going to hospital I'm fine I want to go up to see him so we did. Um, the first two nights sleeping trying to sleep in the tiny bed where I couldn't get out of bed and in a lot of pain, still struggled on. Anyway, the Sunday we went to Blast Beach, which you'll see from the video, it's a very steep cliff getting down. Um, walking along slowly, because I walk slowly anyway, but I was struggling even more on Sunday with the pain in my back. I, all of a sudden I went to try and 
you know, place my foot down walking my left side and it I couldn't weight bear on it. The pain was excruciating. It was a pain that I got from before I'd had the surgery. So it was that same pain that the, the trapped nerve. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, sugar lumps. <laughs> Not quite them nice words. Colin, I can't stand. So then, but in the meantime, I was carrying this brick because I wasn't going to let this brick go no matter what. I'm still taking that brick back up that cliff, even if it bloody kills me. So that's the story of the brick and my back. No, you didn't tell the story of how you got off the beach. Oh, okay. So having to get off the beach, having to try and see, know that the only way back off the beach, other than calling the Coast Guard, was getting back up this blooming steep cliff. Yeah. That was not fun. And then what happened? On the way back. What? Oh, on the way home. Yeah, on the way home. So you decided to come home. Yeah, we came. But we came back. We came back early. We came back early, so we were actually men and not be coming back till Tuesday. We came on the um, Sunday, night. Sunday night. Uh, Colin then said, Let, "Let's uh, go." Home. I was like, no, you know, I don't want to go home because on the way back we're picking up the kitchen pod for Jilly uh, from Sheffield. So it's like, right, okay, I'm booking a travel lodge then, so at least you can have a comfortable bed if that might help. So we spent the night at the travel lodge, which was really lovely room and everything. Bit of a better sleep, but still in a lot of pain. So then we uh, picked up the kitchen on the Monday, drove to our nearest um, A and E after I was called after I called one 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 who wanted to send me to because we were still in Sheffield at that point wanted to send me to one of the hospitals up there, but we we're like. No, it's three hours to our nearest hospital down home. We'll go there. Nine hours in A&E. Nine hours in A&E. I repeat, nine hours. <laughs> um, so basically had x-ray and I have managed to uh, crack one of my pins that's uh, in my spine. So yeah. Not, quite, not great, so um, waiting to get some strong pain relief and got to see how it goes. I've bruised internally my ribs as well. And yeah, so if the pain doesn't go in the next two weeks, I have to be re-referred to have uh, go in for surgery again, which I'm not looking forward to. So that's the update. Okay. Yeah. Done? Yeah. <laughs> but I still wanted to see my sea glass. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.